Good afternoon, and welcome to the Women of Achievement Awards Luncheon. Please welcome from KMOX Radio, our Mistress of Ceremonies, Carol Daniel. Hello, hello, my friends. If you could take your seats, I know some of you are still networking and trying to close that deal. Go ahead and take your seats. We want to welcome you to the 2018 Women of Achievement. Ladies and gentlemen, I know I just asked you to sit down, but now I'm asking you to stand up. I'm asking you to stand up as we welcome. Oh my. I love an obedient crowd simply because I don't have obedient children, so thank you. <laughs> if we would please, our wonderful signal, our incredible trumpets, our trumpeteers are with us today. If you would please welcome our 2018 Women of Achievement. They look fabulous. You can do so. Oh, yes. We love them. Thank you. And you may be seated. You may be seated. Margaret Thatcher once said that if you want something said, ask a man. But if you want something done, ask a woman. We wanted something done. And these 10 women said, I will do it. Welcome to the 63rd anniversary of the Women of Achievement Awards Luncheon. It is such an honor to be with you. I was trying to do the math to think of how many years we have been together, and you know it doesn't matter. We just know that we are together, and we have again found 10 women who have changed the landscape of our region by their voluntary efforts. And we are going to hear more from them. Yes, thank you very much. For our invocation today, would you please welcome Rabbi Elizabeth B. Hirsch. There was a woman who went through life carrying an oil can. And whenever she went through a door that creaked, she would pour a little oil on the hinges. If the gate was hard to open, she would oil the latch. She passed through life lubricating the hard places and making it easier for those who came after her. We have gathered for this sacred moment to recognize those who make a difference in our world. The sage Hillel taught, if I am not for myself, who is for me? And if I am only for myself, what am I? And if not, now when? We are with remarkable women who inspire and guide us to make our community a more humane place. It is our sacred work, regardless of faith, color, age, gender, or ethnicity, to be responsible to those we serve. Through trust and friendship, and by recognizing the divine within one another, we can make a difference. In my tradition, we say that if you have saved one life, it is as if you have saved the entire world. May God bless the work of their hands and the fruit of their labor. May these women continue to embrace their passions and sacred duties. May compassion accompany each of us as we go forward in strength, fortitude, and wisdom. We are grateful for the sustenance and food we are about to enjoy by the hands and hearts of others. Allow us not to be complacent in our words of thanksgiving to you eternal one. Amen. Amen. 
Some of you are like, do I applaud for a prayer? I'm not sure. Is that appropriate? Yes, it's appropriate. Thank you. Thank you. You are not often challenged during lunch, but I am here to challenge you as you enjoy this incredible meal here at the Ritz-Carlton. I am here to challenge you to not utter one complaint about anyone or anything. I am here to challenge you during this incredible lunch to exhibit nothing but great joy and expectation and hope and peace and harmony. I am here to challenge you to simply enjoy. Just enjoy. Enjoy your lunch. We'll be right back. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome back Carol Daniel. Ladies and gentlemen. We hope you enjoyed your lunch. I have to say that I think that maybe there were four or five occasions where tears were shed up here. So emotional daughters and friends from school and people from work coming to congratulate our honorees. It's been a very emotional day. But remember the challenge that I put forth? to not say one complaint, to only feel joy. I think we succeeded. Did you succeed at that? Was it only joy as you were having lunch? Oh, I hear some grumbling. Some of y'all failed. Well, that's terrible. Well, we want to move on with our program and get to the heart of the reason that we are here today. But can I just thank the staff here at the Ritz-Carlton Hotel for their excellent service. We do so. Thank you. We thank you. I want you to welcome a, a dear friend. I call her that. I don't know what she calls me, but... I call her a dear friend. I have such respect for her. She is an incredible woman in our community. Please welcome the president of Women of Achievement. She was a woman of achievement in 2006, Dr. Gwendolyn Packnett. I love you. I love you all. Without a doubt, Carol, you are indeed a friend. <laughs> Good afternoon. What a delight it is to see you and thank you for taking time out of your schedules to be here. Thank you, Carol. You are amazing. You bring such tremendous energy each year. And would you agree she's just a phenomenal lady? Absolutely. As well, thank you to KMOX Radio we are absolutely grateful to you for your generous support, our sincere appreciation. On behalf of the Women of Achievement, I extend our gratitude to our sponsors. Your generosity and outstanding support help to make this celebration of volunteerism possible. Thank you to each of our sponsors. If you'd kindly hold your applause as I recognize a few people at this time, I'd like to recognize our capable immediate past president, Joni Karanjeff, our very gifted vice president of Women of Achievement, Marian Nunn, the Women of Achievement Board of Directors who are supportive and generous in the giving of their time to the Women of Achievement organization, all the while remaining committed to volunteer service. They make any job seem easy. At this time then, would Joni Karanchev, immediate past president, Marian Nunn, vice president, and the entire board of directors stand that we might applaud you. Thank you. As well, I'd like to thank each of you for being here today to celebrate women who have given much to this community. Our, gra our gratitude to you for supporting them. 
We all know powerful women as witnessed here today. These women, you'll discover, these 2018 honorees are nothing short of exceptional. They are daring and focused as they champion issues with vigor and with tenacity. They have dared to tackle timely issues of our day as if they have self-declared, I am the answer to the questions that are being raised. They inspire, ignite, and inform. They are driven by their determination to be the change they wish to see. It is said that volunteers are not paid not because they are worthless, but because they are priceless. Each, thank you, you can applaud that. <laughs> Each of these honorees provides, provides priceless volunteer service and volunteer leadership in our region. And each, therefore, makes me personally proud to spell my name W-O-M-A-N. Once again, thank each of you for supporting them. It is my privilege to recognize past women of achievement who have been honored for their volunteer service and leadership for the past 63 years. Each of these women have helped to make communities better. Today, we have over 100 in attendance. Would each of our women of achievement please stand and be recognized? All of our women of achievement. Thank you. It's been said time and time again, and it remains true, they really are our sheroes. Phyllis Langstorff, our luncheon chair, and Dr. Eva Frazier, vice chair, you have provided stellar leadership along with a great team that has been extremely instrumental in planning this year's luncheon. Would Vice Chair Dr. Eva Frazier and all committee chairs 2018 kindly stand and be recognized? Thank you to each of you. And now it is my delight to introduce this year's awesome luncheon chair, Phyllis Z. Langsdorf, class of 2014. Phyllis. Thank you, Gwendolyn, and thank you, Carol. Welcome, everyone to the 2018 Women of Achievement Luncheon. We have an amazing class of honorees sitting here on the dais, and I want to take this opportunity to say congratulations to each of you. It's been my honor and my pleasure to serve as chair of this year's Women of Achievement Luncheon. Gwendolyn, I can't thank you enough for your guidance, your leadership. You have been my support and my mentor this entire year. Thank you. I believe my committee chairs and members are among the finest ever. Eva Frazier, my vice chair, please stand and be recognized and stay standing. Thank you for being my right hand and my WOA sister. Will all committee chairs please rise and be recognized and stay standing. Now, would all the committee members please join your chairs and rise. Let's give them a round of applause as they have done a wonderful job. 
Thank you so much. I'd like to join Gwendolyn in thanking all of our sponsors. Without you, the sponsor, the luncheon would not be the same, and we would not be able to promote volunteerism as we do. On each table, you will find a green envelope that says, the beautiful orchid centerpiece is available for a donation of $20. If you are interested in purchasing a centerpiece, please place your cash or check made out to Women of Achievement in the envelope and hand it to a volunteer as you exit the ballroom. If the orchid on your table has been taken, please feel free to select an orchid on another table. And finally, everyone got a packet of seeds. This is a gift to you from Women of Achievement. We want each of you to plant the seeds as a reminder that the Women of Achievement plant seeds to encourage others to volunteer and make a difference in our community. Thank you. Thank you, Phyllis and Dr. Frazier, for your wonderful job today. I want to be clear about something this afternoon as we are saying thank yous, that I like women. I say that. I say that because we still have a reputation we're trying to battle, that we don't get along, that we are jealous of each other, that, that we don't work well together. No. I like working with women. I do. And what's more, I like working for women. And you need to know right now some history. KMOX Radio has its first ever woman news director, Beth Coglin. I like working for her. I told her I will kick a door in for you. Don't say anything negative about her, because I'm coming for you. I'm menopausal, so I, you know, I'm, I got a little edge. I'm, I have a little edge. How many women understand what I'm talking about? We understand, so I, I might say or do anything to defend the women that I like and that I work for. I'm going to in introduce you to a woman that I work for. She is young, and we're like, she's so young. Oh my God, she's so young. But she is dynamic, and she is taking us places that we have never been. I like working for this woman. Would you please welcome our senior vice president, market manager for Intercom Radio, my boss, my girl, I want a parking space. <laughs> Please welcome Becky Damian. Wow. Yeah. They, you want my parking spot? You got it, girl. You just got it. <laughs> Thank you, Carol. Um, on behalf of KMOX Radio and Intercom St. Louis, we are so honored and proud to continue this amazing partnership. Since 1955, KMOX and the Women of Achievement have shared one common thread of selfless volunteerism and civic duty. Congratulations to all of the honorees on the dais today. Your actions of pure volunteerism have made our community and our world a better place. I am truly more inspired than I was this morning just by being here today and feeling all the positivity in this room. So congratulations to all of you for making such a huge impact and a difference and not just talking about it, you're actually, you're doing it, which is so meaningful. So thank you very much. 
anyone in here who works with an organization who tries to raise money for an organization knows how difficult it can be to find sponsors. And I overheard our next presenter saying that if, if Women of Achievement ever tried to find another sponsor instead of them, that she would wrestle them to still be a sponsor of this incredible luncheon. Wonderful person. We love the Ladue News. Please welcome Andrew Griffith, General Manager, Ladue News, and a presenting sponsor. Andrew? I thought that was off the record. <laughs> you didn't say that. <laughs> On behalf of my team at Ladue News, I want to congratulate this year's class of honorees, truly remarkable women of achievement whose commitment and dedication to improving the lives of others inspires us all. Your tireless and meaningful work helps enrich lives, empower individuals, and better communities while leading the charge for others looking for ways to contribute. Sharing stories of volunteerism is very much at the heart of our mission at Ladue News. So it is sincerely an honor and a privilege for us to partner with Women of Achievement each year to cast a bright spotlight on these awe-inspiring women whose important work and an outstanding service to others serves as an example to us all that one person truly can make a difference. We take great pride in recognizing volunteers like those being honored today and in sharing their stories stories of people who selflessly give of their time and their talents. It is our hope that in telling your stories, we are increasing awareness and encouraging others to get involved and support your efforts. Having worked with Women of Achievement organization for so many years now, I can tell this year's class of honorees, you are, truly, you are joining a truly incredible sisterhood of women of action, devoted to helping others and advancing important causes throughout our region. As you look out and over this room today, know that it is filled with women who share your passion for helping others and who stand with you in your mission to make St. Louis a better place for all. Thank you. It is my pleasure to introduce the platinum, gold, silver, bronze, and our contributing sponsors for this year's luncheon. They help the Women of Achievement organization continue this wonderful tradition. If you would, please hold your applause until all of our sponsors have been acknowledged. Our platinum sponsors include Centene Charitable Foundation, the Stewart Family Foundation Worldwide Technology Foundation. Our gold sponsors include Amron, Carnival Corporation, CPG, Emerson, Enterprise Holdings Foundation, Garden View Care Centers, The Gatesworth, Maryville University, Mercedes-Benz of St. Louis, Neiman Marcus, The Ritz-Carlton St. Louis, The St. Louis Cardinals, Thompson Coburn LLP, Washington University in St. Louis, and Wells Fargo Advisors. Our silver sponsors include Marion Nunn and Tom Wendell. Simon Foundation. Our bronze sponsors include Alberay Jewelry, Barry and Myra Sherman, Arcturus, Mr. and Mrs. Stephen F. Brower, the Clark Fox Family Foundation, David Mason and Associates, the Del Mar Gardens Family, Edward Jones, First Bank, Marilyn Fox, Nissa Investment Advisors, LLC, On the Run by Wallace Companies, Park Crest Plastic Surgery, Mary Pillsbury, Stinson Leonard Street, LLP, Jul Julie Thompson, Julie Thomas Ward of Mineta Group, Technology Partners, West County Radiological Group. And our in-kind sponsors include BBJ Linen Rental, Drew Karanjeff, Thelma Stewart, Thorne Studios, Trotter Photo, Tussie Photography, Universal Creative Concepts, and Asha Zimmerman. Let's hear it now for all of our wonderful sponsors. I mentioned tears earlier, so do get ready. At this time, please direct your attention to the large video screens as we show a video that honors the efforts of these incredible women whom we are honoring today. I 
I realized I didn't know that much about the civil rights movement living in St. Louis, but growing up and thinking about it and looking at videos, I always asked myself, what would you have done? Would you have had the courage um, to show up? Would you have had the courage to be at a lunch counter? And I didn't have to answer that question until 2014. And so when Michael Brown happened, I had to answer the question for myself. Will you stay in your house? Will you stay in your safe church? Or will you try and be a part of the change that's happening in your city? And I decided to become a part of the change. She's very tenacious, not one to give up very easily. If she believes in something, she advocates for it to the end, working throughout the community, doing various Bible studies and organizing marches. She was on the streets in Ferguson. So just an all around advocate and teacher and mentor. Becoming part of the change for me has been my involvement with Metropolitan Congregations United. Some people know it as MCU. It is an organization for people of faith uh, who come together to work on issues within the community. We do work particularly right now in St. Louis around what we call pathway to power. They can determine by third grade which children they believe will go on to college and which children they believe will funnel through our prison industrial system. And so what our goal is, is to break that pipeline, to give children a chance to succeed, to give children a chance at an education and a good life. Some of the things that she makes look so easy. You know, I know they aren't without a struggle, but if it's worth having, it's worth struggling for. For me, all of it ties into justice and faith for me, because that's a part of my faith, um, to do justice. I was asked to work with Flourish St. Louis before it became Flourish St. Louis, because St. Louis has an extremely high infant mortality rate. Why is it that one in every five um, baby born in St. Louis will not make it to a healthy first birthday? That doesn't make sense to me. And so working with Flourish St. Louis, to me, is also a justice issue. Providing compassion uh, along with advocacy, uh, I think, has been her biggest uh, effect. Working with Magdalene St. Louis, another justice issue, helping women to come out of human trafficking and drug addiction. And so for me, all of it ties into justice and faith for me, because that's a part of my faith. Um, to do justice. I believe we're put on this earth to thrive, to enjoy the beauty that God has created. Um, and whatever I can do to, to help that, I'm gonna do that. I'm just proud to be a part of these organizations and what they do. My parents were involved in the civil rights movement as a child and I was taken to demonstrations when I was little and I believed that uh, working for justice was important and I learned that early on from my parents. By day, she's a social worker. By night and weekends and every other second that's available, she is a social activist trying to help people who are living on the streets. About 12 years ago, I was looking for one of my clients. I couldn't find him, but I saw a man slumped over so I drove up to him and was trying to get him to go to the hospital and couldn't, he couldn't get in the car. And um, so I called an ambulance, begged them to take him and they wouldn't do it. I went over to the Walgreens nearby and bought lots of these little tiny blankets, which felt kind of pathetic. And I covered them up in the blankets. Well, I woke up around three in the morning that night and I thought, oh, I should go check on him. And I didn't do it and he died that night. And it was one of the worst moments of my life. And uh, I asked people afterwards, I said, let's do something more. She started a group called St. Louis Winter Outreach. And for a number of years, they went and found people and gave them blankets and tried to take them to shelter. But then they realized that there was no shelter to take them. So we began to open winter shelters. People could come and know they had a place for the winter. And at the end of the winter, we decided not to close it. We decided to turn it into permanent housing. So this coming year, we're gonna open our fifth, what we call a CC house. I really believe that we all need community. We all need places um, where we can really be our best selves. And you do that better in small settings. That's why St. Louis Winter Outreach focuses on opening a lot of smaller shelters and wants to build small communities in our neighborhood. She has that passion. She lives it every day in every way. And then she combines that with the vision about things that can be done to make a difference. 
I know a woman who uh, I've known for probably 25 years. She's been homeless all that time, and she, because of our CC House effort, is now housed and has been for about two and a half years. And she said to me, I didn't realize how much time I spent being homeless, how exhausting it was for me every day to get up, to figure out where I was gonna go that day, how was I gonna shower, how was I gonna get food, how I was gonna get across town or anywhere I needed to go because I had no money and no bus fare. And she said, now I have a house and I have a place to stay, place to live, food to have. And now I'm thinking about other things I can do with my life. The impact of what she has done has meant saving people's lives. And there's so many people who do this work, and I'm convinced by the number of people involved that we can radically change the face of homelessness in this country. And it's my goal to be part of ending homelessness in our city. There's been times when things haven't been so perfect for me, and somebody just giving me a smile made the biggest difference in the world to me. And so I wanted to give that back to other people. Shannon is uh, remarkable. She doesn't know it. Shannon does wonderful things and doesn't want anybody to know that she did it. I was a stay-at-home mom, and um, after I got divorced, I needed to get a career, and I had done some event coordination, and so I started promoting my business through business networking groups, and that's where I met April. She was such a phenomenal person to meet, and I liked everything she talked about, that we started getting to know each other a little bit more, and then she said, you know, why don't you come join our group? The name of that group is Alethea. Alethea works with um, nightlife strippers, prostitutes. They've come from very difficult situations, and we try to help them um, out of those situations if they so choose. The whole idea is to let them know that there's somebody outside of you know the strip clubs that care about them. At four in the morning when she rolls in and she's just exhausted and can't sleep and just the things that she's seeing, that she's hearing, it's heartbreaking. These girls that are in there a lot of times are in very abusive relationships. They have a lot of times children to raise and you know bills to pay and this is the only thing they know. And since I've been doing it we've gotten eight girls out of the clubs, help them get education, help them get places to live, just basically get on their feet and get back into society. Then I started moving from that to some other volunteer work. April introduced me to um, another man named Jake, and Jake Austin runs the shower truck. And when I first met Jake, he was just giving out hygiene products. He and Shannon met uh, downtown. She started throwing out some ideas about how to raise money and how to do things, and he wanted her involved in this. And she wanted to be part of it as well. So we would follow around food trucks that would hand out food to the homeless, and we would set up a hygiene table. And a man walked up to him one day, and he handed it out to him, and the man said, um, this is great, but what am I supposed to do with the shampoo? And so that sparked the idea for the shower truck. We started raising funds and bought a used box truck, and then somebody outfitted the truck. Our goal is to have 20 trucks by 2020. It is an amazing feeling to watch somebody get into the shower truck and come out of the shower truck with the biggest smile in the world. You know, a shower can change your attitude. It can make you feel good about yourself. She's like a butterfly when she's down there because she's bouncing from person to person. A lot of them call her mom. They get down there and she's just kind of a, a mainstay. They all know to look for her and she's there to help. I want people to be able to feel like somebody cares, feel like somebody out there wants to just a friendly smile or treat them like a human. I think if everybody gave just a few minutes of time, what, what an amazing world we'd live in. When you see someone come out of the darkness of a dangerous situation and through our help lift themselves up, it's just wonderful. I'm sure that Vicki Dolan does not know the number of people whose lives she has touched, whose lives she has impacted, whose lives she has made better. She's a founding member of Commercial Real Estate Women uh, of St. Louis. She saw a need. We founded our chapter here in 1982 with a literally a handful of women found themselves 
uh, lone soldiers in a male-dominated industry and decided to do something about it. Today we have 200 members. We provide education opportunities, we provide scholarships, leadership, training, and mentoring within our local chapters to all of our members. When I was on the board with CREW, we decided that as successful professional women, we needed to take on a philanthropic mission and Safe Connections was natural. The Safe Connections work is to prevent and to end domestic and sexual violence and that's because we believe that everyone deserves to be safe and healthy in their relationship. Vicki has been involved with Safe Connections for at least two decades as a volunteer and then more recently as a board member and as our board chair. When I saw what they were doing to bring our survivors back to light to help them regain their lives and self-image and help them move through to be successful individuals. It just seemed like a perfect fit for me because it, it was taking that destruction and turning it into a positive life for someone. Vicki's also involved with the American Foundation for Suicide Prevention and has made dramatic uh, impact there as well. I found out about AFSP because I myself attended a survivor group when I lost my daughter, Carolyn. After going through my grieving in 2013, I felt it was time to do whatever I could to save someone else that grief and to save a life. When she has passion, when she has interest, when she has a belief in something, she doesn't just believe in it. She becomes part of it and makes it sure that that organization or that effort grows and has an impact on our community. My special symbol is the butterfly because to me, the butterfly symbols rebirth and hope. And of course, this is my most prized necklace because it reminds me of Carolyn and the hope and the rebirth that I'm hoping to provide in my own small way through Safe Connections and American Foundation for Suicide Prevention. I am a, a judge in St. Louis County, and I volunteer <laughs> everywhere someone needs my help. <laughs> she wants to help people and bring people together whenever she can. Her mother had a saying that she lives by, while other people are uh, sleeping, you should be working. So <laughs> she's always working, she's always doing something. Having to be an interpreter for my mother when we first came into this country, we would go to the grocery store, and as we were checking out, the um, clerk would, would look at my mother and then she'd look at me and then she'd look at my mother as if we didn't belong together and there was just such disdain in their eyes for us just being in existence. I felt that justice was not being served in the eyes of you know uh, a child. I think something just welled up in me that one day when I was old enough or big enough that I would straighten all of that out. She's founded organizations such as the Missouri Asian Bar Association uh, that came as a result of a conversation between uh, Judge Teitelman and herself and a couple of other people and they decided they need an organization. The reason they wanted me to do that is because I'm uh, not only Asian American but I'm African American and the uh, African American uh, Bar, the Mound City Bar Association, has wanted to uh, have a sisterhood with that organization. So uh, I was really excited about bringing those two organizations uh, together. And so I thought the best way to do this is to have what we call now a unity dinner and invite everybody. She's on the board of Hope House here in St. Louis. She's an honorary counsel for the Republic of Korea. She's done work with the Korean Veterans Association as well. The Lynx organization, which she is a part of, recently did a uh, mock trial uh, involving uh, children uh, in, in her courtroom, and the kids did very well. The young girls that come in at seven or eight years old, and we've actually, you know, progress through college. A lot of them are, are lawyers today. Some of them are judges today. Uh, simply for taking the time out and having a cup of coffee and letting them know that um, 
You don't have to be at a certain place to get to where you want to be. You know, so I think role models are, are, are very important and mentoring is very important. And so I try to share my experiences with, with people to let them know that I wasn't always, you know, what you see right now. You know, I came from a long way. When you see someone do something, it always looks easy. But of course, it's, it's much more difficult when you do it. But once you've done it, you have confidence in, uh, in, in yourself and the knowledge that you can achieve, you can do. And this is what she's trying to instill in these young people and help them see that in themselves. It fills us up with um, hope and it gives us um, new connections and uh, different ways of thinking. If I can make it, you can make it. <laughs>
My personal connection to Kim and Transparent is when my nephew, Ian, became my nephew, Ian, when he was 10 years old. And he had been telling us as a family that he was a boy. And we had been navigating that, really my sister had been. And she came upon Transparent. And it was just this little baby organization meeting, uh, I think, once a month at Children's Hospital for support groups. Transgender experience? may be one of the most misunderstood human experiences out there. We started with, I think, four families and um, it just gradually over time grew. We didn't have a single month where we didn't add families to the group once the word got out that we were in existence. They are educating physicians and schools and therapists on what these kids need and advocating for these families in the medical um, system here in St. Louis and beyond. Kim is an integral player in creating the Washington University Transgender Center at Children's Hospital. We are now a St. Louis Children's Hospital community partner and I'm very proud of, of that and to have that um, recognition and status within the transgender community. I think that's important. People are taking notice of Kim's work in the gender identity world. And in 2015, she was awarded the Human Rights Campaign's Ally for Equality Award, a very prestigious honor for someone impacting this community. It's the best thing I've ever done in my life to be a part of that, to be a person in this world supporting those families so that they don't have to go through what my husband and I went through alone. So my nephew today is doing great. He's about the same age as Kim's son and they're both thriving in their lives and with their friends and they're doing great. My son is very proud of the work that Transparent does. I make sure that he knows that Transparent exists as a direct result of him. The fact that not everybody may be on board right away or not that everybody gets it, he is okay with that. And he kind of just marches forward and holds his head high. And um, I'm just inspired by him every single day. I've been involved with different community organizations over the years for a long time and saw a need where there were a lot of smaller nonprofits that were doing amazing work. The problem is, is overhead and expenses that forbid them from doing what they needed to do. So we started Riverbend Family Ministries to say, what if we pulled smaller nonprofits together? Riverbend Family Ministries, to me, really is an incubator. It's really um, kind of a one-stop shop for families who are in crisis. We've pulled like-minded nonprofits together that work with our families that are affected by trauma, most of the time due to violence, addiction, homelessness, and poverty. Um, those six agency smaller uh, nonprofits have pulled together under one roof and holistically worked together to wrap around our families um, that are most vulnerable in Madison County. She doesn't just have vision. Tammy works that vision. She volunteers. She is a volunteer executive director who not just casts the vision, for the programming that's needed for our community, but she has boots on the ground and she is talking directly with clients who come in. She will take that phone call of the addict who's in crisis and, and needing help and she will say, come down here. And if Tammy is available, she's the one sitting on a couch encouraging them and talking to them about services that they need. And so to be able to pull some of those smaller nonprofits into Riverbend to be able to work for the whole of the family has just been a dream, but it's been very uh, healing for me as well uh, to be able to see the change that happens in families. So many of our families who come to us that are in crisis, whether they're part of the refuge program that's housed at Riverbend Family Ministries or Heartbeats, which is housed at Riverbend Family Ministries. Families will tell us if it wasn't for Tammy coming alongside of me and empowering me and telling me that I can do the hard work that needs to be done, we wouldn't be here today. We actually are seeing generations changed um, by the work that is, is being done. Some of our 
uh, horrid traumas that you've read on the paper, that you've seen on our news, um, our families that walk through our doors, that we are able to give hope and healing to and put them on a different path. And Tammy really empowers people to look through a lens of empathy. And if that doesn't change a community, I don't know what will. There's so many lives that need to be given hope and healing, and there's so many families that are broken that the work's just not done. It's just not done. And so I will continue to volunteer until I can't. <laughs> um, and that's why I do it, um, because um, there's just a lot of work yet to be done. People really want to do good. They really want to succeed. And they really just usually need that little bit of encouragement or help. I do believe in the goodness of those we serve. And they just need a chance. I've known Marilyn since 2008 when she came on the board at the National Council of Jewish Women. Worked with her hand in hand to develop some programs and some new initiatives, and she really takes it to heart. I mean, she treats her volunteer work as if it's a full time job. The project that I'm really most proud about is the Healing Hearts Bank, the micro lending bank with National Council of Jewish Women. Understanding that economic security was one way of allowing domestic violence survivors to leave a bad situation and to stay out of it we thought we could do something about this in St. Louis. So fast forward to 2011, we opened our first bank, which was at Lydia's house. What it meant was that women could take out loans of $500 at 5% interest to help secure their current job or pursue other jobs. These are really women who are really getting a second chance. And the really unique part about the program is that the women who were borrowing were also volunteers, so they were helping other women, and we did credit reporting as part of the agency. We now have six banks that serve 17 agencies, and we've given out over 115 loans. And under Marilyn's leadership, um, she developed a sustainable program that not only helps women in St. Louis, but was actually copied by other NCJW groups around the country. I have had the privilege of meeting these women, talking to them, and having them share their stories with me. She is active with Jews United for Justice and some social and economic justice around payday lending. She has been involved nationally with NCGW, has attended a lot of our advocacy meetings. Another agency that I'm very involved and very passionate about is Ready Readers because I am so passionate about early childhood literacy. Ready Readers reads to 10,000 kids a week with 500 readers. So many times when I will come into the room, they will sort of pull me and say, Miss Marilyn, let me tell you about and something that happened at home. And sometimes they'll relate things to a book we read. These kids are like little sponges. It's a little bit like the Pied Piper. People like to follow Marilyn. They like to work on the projects that she's working on because they know they're going in the right direction. One of my favorite quotes is from activist Marion Wright Edelman, and she really says it all. You're not obliged to win, but you're just obliged to wake up each morning and do the very best you can each day. I'm a mother and I'm a social worker. I also happen to be married to Mark Wrighton, who's the Chancellor of Washington University. And that enables me to be the mother of 7,000 children instead of the two daughters I actually gave birth to. I first met Risa back in the early 90s when she came to an organization that my husband and I are involved in, Our Little Haven, and she came to volunteer. I had heard about an organization called Our Little Haven that was caring for the youngest victims of abuse and neglect. These are babies and toddlers who didn't have families to protect them. So one night a week I went down and I held babies and toddlers and I read them stories and I got to be a little bit of a protection against a rather rough world for these young children. 
and we enjoyed her presence there, her laughter, her humor, her tender care. And she did that for years. With whatever resources I had and whatever knowledge I had, I wanted to be able to help children who just didn't have um, the things that all children should have. And getting to know all the other things that Risa does is, uh, you know, the list is lengthy. In 2001, I started a, an organization called Home Plate. Her own daughter was away at college and feeling a little, you know, homesick. And she called me to tell me that she had this fabulous experience being invited to the home of one of her professors. And I realized I'm in a position to do that for 7,000 undergraduates here at Washington University. So um, I got a few of my friends together and we started with a couple of kids who I dragged into the program and just word of mouth and a little advertising. And now there's over 350 families providing wonderful dinners and a touch of home for probably four or 500 students at a time. Her patience and her faith and her empathy come through in all her volunteer endeavors. I met this woman, Charmaine Smith, who started this organization called Discovering Options, which pairs mentors with young, disadvantaged children in our city. And through that, I met a young girl, a nine-year-old named Chelsea Harris. And over the years, we developed a really strong relationship. In 2015, when Chelsea was on her way to a part-time job, after school and she was murdered. It was just a devastating experience and that catapulted me to think of what we can do to curb this epidemic of violence that we're all experiencing. She was able to get the community response and have a collaborative effort to respond to that. I've been very lucky in life and I feel very privileged to, to have the opportunity to give back. It sounds like a cliche when I hear myself say that, but it's, it's true. Well, we know that it has already been a wonderful afternoon, but it's about to get a lot better. Our thanks to these outstanding volunteers. For the official duties, please welcome back Gwendolyn Packnett and Phyllis Langsdorf to present the awards for the 2018 Women of Achievement. Karen D. Anderson, honored for civic responsibility. Tika Childress, Community Betterment. <laughs> Shannon Marie Dykemper, Humanitarian Concerns. Victoria Dolan, Caring and Compassion. <laughs> Judy Freddy Draper, Multicultural Awareness. Rachel Ebling, Music Therapy Advocacy. Kim Hutton, Family Empowerment. Tammy Iscarius, Social Enterprise.
Marilyn Ratkin, Social Justice. Risa Swirling Brighton, Impactful Leadership. Well, as the famous, late, wonderful Jack Buck once said, go crazy, folks, go crazy. We are so grateful for the lives that have been changed and saved by this class, our 2018 Women of Achievement. And you need to know that the reason that the organization does this is to encourage other voluntary efforts, to encourage your volunteerism, to encourage you to see a problem and decide to fix it like they have done. We want to thank you once again and honor you today. You are now a part of the sisterhood. We'll never let you go. We will never let you go. We want to remind you about the beautiful centerpieces that are available for $20 a piece. Use the envelope. They're probably already claimed. I've seen people grabbing the envelopes. We're glad about that. This is a fundraiser. Please use that envelope, hand it to a volunteer as you exit the ballroom. Please mark your calendars. We already know where we will be 2019, Tuesday, May 14th, right here again, honoring more women who are changing our community. Thank you. God bless you. Have a wonderful afternoon. She just wants to be beautiful, she goes.